How's it chaps and uh, welcome back to another episode of Bird and Bulls. Today we are not going to build something but we're actually going to revisit this. It's the DeVault uh, DCS 570B brushless circular saw. Uh, I've had some comments, uh, specifically two comments from two viewers um, making various comments on the build quality of this thing so I thought well let's tear it down and we'll have a look. Um, before we do that though, uh, just wanted to make comments about the performance. Uh, so far I am happy with it. I've only had it for about four or five months and haven't used it as much as I thought I would uh, but I've made a few cuts and uh, so far I'm pretty happy. I use the 5 amp battery. Now I uh, hear some people use the 2 amps and the, the FlexVolt 60 volt battery. Um, that's like a 9 amp battery I think and uh, with the 2 amp the smaller batteries they're not working that well uh, the 60 volt the guys are getting great run time although with this 5 amp uh, it's the only battery that I've got and it seems to be working very well for now um, no real power difference over the 60 volt 9 amp battery although just with uh, an extended run time on the on the bigger battery but that's not what we're talking about today so uh, let's tear this thing down. Uh, now before we actually tear it down, uh, the two viewers that, that actually took the time to comment on the video, so thanks guys for that, uh, Interman77, um, he actually commented on a, a plastic part in here uh, that's actually that's holding the, the arbor and the arbor bearing into place. Uh, wasn't too happy about that and look I, I didn't even notice it until uh, he commented and I took the blade off and had a look and it's plastic. So we're gonna have a look at that. And then also um, somebody else, what is his name? Alexandra Wang. Uh, you were saying that uh, your shoe, now the shoe is uh, this bit over here, um, it's slightly skew, I think, uh, or misaligned by about one millimeter uh, from, the, from the saw blade. I've measured mine and mine is also roughly about a millimeter, um, a millimeter off. Uh, now I just measured it with the Mark 1 eyeball there. Not quite. <laughs> Used a vernier and uh, just measured from the kind of you know from the running edge to each side of the blade. Now this is a fairly new blade, so it's not warped or bent at any way. I also checked it with this blade. This is also a new blade, and they both give the same result, where um, the shoe is actually slightly off by about a millimeter. Uh, that is when we measure to the teeth. So. Um, Something to remember, this is not really a precision instrument as such, uh, not really like a table saw. I think if you're wanting really accurate stuff and you want to run long cuts, table saws are fine. Uh, but for what this is designed for, I reckon within a one millimeter tolerance, yeah, it's, uh, it's fine for me. Although I'm not a woodworker, so maybe you guys uh, can make comment on that. Uh, let me know. Yeah, so guys, thanks for uh, thanks for commenting on the videos, uh, taking the time out for that. And uh, if you haven't seen the review, the unboxing, and initial thoughts about uh, this thing, then check it out. Uh, the video was about five months back. I'll link it. I can't remember which side the card comes up. Um, it's one of those sides. Uh, so check that out and stick around, uh, guys. Just remember, I am no expert at stripping tools. All I'm going to do is uh, strip it, and as we strip it, we'll talk about it, and I'll give you my diagnosis. Um, so the first thing that I see is the blade guard. Now the blade guard is aluminium and the center of the blade guard is actually plastic, this, this piece over there. Um, you can also see inside there, pretty plastic. Uh, it is made out of polycarbonate and it says polycarbonate slash PBT. I'm not sure what the PBT is, uh, but I would have liked to see actually the entire blade guard being made out of aluminium. So, uh, so far I can see uh, when we place the Kind of the saw down onto anything. Um, the first thing that's going to hit the ground is this is this blade guard, and what it's what probably going to happen is if it falls off a table, uh, you know it, the blade guard is going to be pulled one way or the other. Now it's already got a little bit of play in it, um, and I foresee that the first thing that's going to break is this plastic piece. Um, so again, if that was all aluminium, it would have been better. Aluminium shoe is not too bad. It is. Four millimeters thick. I'm not sure what that is in inches, but I'm sure Google knows. Uh, just a, a stamped out piece of plate. Before we get any further, uh, the bit that Alexander was talking about with the plate being, uh, or the shoe being slightly skew, um, looks like it's basically only got the support in the front, basically only got the support over here. So all the way from the front, it is having to support the back plate. Um, it's got this mount at the back, but this doesn't 
you know, it's not really any type of indexing mount or doesn't really provide much strength. I mean, you can see how, how flexible it is. Um, so again, that might be why you're getting one millimeter run out um, on the cuts. Although again, just my diagnosis. I'm not too sure though. Here's the bit that joins the shoe to the actual machine. And uh, now something that I didn't notice previously, uh, if your kind of zero marks over here are not really lining up, there's actually a small little grab screw. If you have a look in there closely, that grab screw kind of adjusts uh, the the bottoming out or the uh, the zero mark. So didn't notice that before, but um, overall not too bad. It's just uh, this is probably a sintered uh, aluminium. Uh, at least it's aluminium and not plastic. So quite happy about that. This model has also got the rafter hook. Uh, I see some of the guys reviewing the 570s. Uh, they don't have the rafter hook, so um, something that's quite nice. Uh, I don't use it much, but uh, I know a lot of people ask about it. It's quite nice for the uh, shoe adjustment, a nice uh, steel uh, extended bolt there, not plastic. I'm pretty happy about that. The guard has got a nice little sealed bearing in there, nothing spectacular. It says China HYA 1603 LUV. It would have been nice to see this entire centerpiece made out of the same aluminium. It would have been nice to just, you know, cast it into the same piece. I don't know, probably did it uh, because there was a small cost saving involved. Yep, that's the way everything's going nowadays. Make it as cheap as possible. This is the plastic piece that uh, Interman 77 was talking about. Kind of holds the, the bearing for the arbor and uh, the gearbox in place. Fasteners, yeah, also torques. Nothing security torques, but uh, not that you would really need security torques on something like this. Ugh. See something I don't like already. This is a working machine, it vibrates, uh, and none of these screws have got um, Loctite on or any type of thread locking paste on them, so not too fond of that. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, not a very big gearbox at all. Um, first thing that kind of jumps to mind there is a bit of grease. Uh, good to see there's a fair amount of grease in. Uh, I'm not too sure what type of grease this is, uh, but it looks fairly good. And uh, the gear set is, uh, well, I didn't expect it to be a mold gear set. It's just a sintered gear set. Both the uh, pinion and uh, this bigger gear is uh, are sintered metal. Uh, nice little feature here, just to keep the dust out. There is an O-ring around uh, around this plastic bit. But now, I kind of agree with uh, Interman 77, uh, this is the bit that he was not too happy about. Now, I know with some of the more expensive uh, saws, especially the scroll saws, uh, where you've got a lot more power going through these things, um, the gearboxes, uh, that part of the gearbox is also sintered aluminium, uh, but this piece would also be steel, like a steel plate or an al aluminium plate. Um, now, in here, it is plastic. It doesn't have any material markings on it as such, uh, but what it does feel like, it feels very, very hard. Um, not, not a lot of flex in it. Uh, probably a polycarbonate of sorts, um, probably going to be the same plastic as our guard. Uh, and yep, it is taking up a fair amount of the of the load, uh, so of the cutting load that way. And as the blade wants to kind of twist, uh, this plastic piece is taking up a lot of that load. Uh, if you look carefully, the bearing is also a sealed bearing. Uh, again, nothing uh, spectacular, China. HYA inside there and 6001RS 6001RS um, for the size of that bearing. The arbor, eh, just a standard piece of turned steel, nothing also spectacular. Not too bad, but could be better.
definitely a lot of fasteners holding this clamshell together. Always a good thing. I'd rather have a little bit more than not enough. Eesh, this bit doesn't fit in there. I think we have got everything. And there we have it. It is a fairly large motor. Clamshell is a nylon PA6 and glass fiber reinforced 30%. TPE is the thermoplastic elastomer, that is the rubber overmolding that we've got uh, on most of the new tools. Uh, some other markings here when it was made. The F, not sure what that is. And a couple of other markings, but uh, yeah, not too bad. It's uh, fairly stiff, the, the case itself. Ah. I was wondering how, how that handle comes off. We didn't actually have to take it off, but uh, if you are wondering, it's just held on with one screw and it slides off. So yeah, not, not too bad. I don't see any telltale marks of wear or vibration yet, although it's not very old. Uh, I am seeing a bit of dust in the, <laughs> in the actual clamshell itself and this little board looks like it is loose under the covers we've got our battery connector or terminal over here and it just looks like right next to the battery terminal is a little pcb or the controlling circuit it's a potted circuit so we can't quite see what is going on over there uh, we've got our switch well the switching uh, electronic switch has the me mechanical part of the switch mechanism and the the lock little capacitor uh, i would imagine that this is for the light, uh, where the light uh, discharges slowly, and a bit of wiring going into what looks like a very sizable motor. Uh, this is a brushless motor, so we've got some hall sensors on the back here. Uh, well, at least I think there are hall sensors. The locking mechanism for the switch uh, seems also pretty good. Uh, I don't think anything is going to break here. Quite a solid piece of plastic, and as you can see, it's kind of blocking the movement of the switch. And as soon as you push it in, then the switch can be operated. Uh, one thing also I don't really like, uh, if you look at the shaft of the switch, there's no bellows on here. So uh, any dust will ingress into the actual switch itself and over time uh, might become a problem. Especially, you know, there's going to be a lot of sawdust, mix a little bit of sawdust with a bit of moisture and uh, you might have problems down the line. The switch is a Defon switch. Now, I believe that most of the DeVolt products are fitted with these same Defon switches. You can see that it's rated at 250 volts and at 12 and a half amps or 125 volts at 22 amps AC. And there's some other markings on there, not too sure what those are. I also like what I see on the back uh, of the wires or the back of the switch, should I say, that um, the wiring has been crimped on both, uh, both well, all four connectors actually, and then the lugs have been screwed onto the switch. So I would really like to see that on all of the connections. Um, there's no chance of having dry solder joints. We've also got a nice fat diode on the bottom of the switch. Now this is to control or stop the back EMF. So when you let the switch go and uh, before the motor stops, you kind of get a reverse current flow. And then this diode kind of reduces the voltage or stops that voltage. It I think it uh, kind of limits it to around about one volt. Uh, so it protects the rest of the, of the circuit, especially the stuff in the switch and that'll be in the circuit itself. Between the actual battery contacts, the holder and uh, the casing, there's a little buffering spring. And if you look closely as you hit the battery in, there's a bit of spring in the system there. Uh, that is probably just to protect the, the contacts and this little battery holder and Possibly the battery itself. Um, that's well, at least that's what I guess. Electronics are for the most part <laughs> potted, so you're not really going to get into anything here if it breaks. Uh, not too sure how long that's going to last, but I guess uh, these things aren't really meant to be repaired. Uh, you're supposed to probably send it into the repair agents and they'll put a whole new unit in. Um, also, another thing that uh, I don't really like is this. Uh, wire joint uh, onto the onto the terminal. You can see it's kind of welded on there. I would prefer to see the crimped and um, and spaded connectors. Now these two center ones over here are crimped and spaded, but these are welded, I suppose you would say. Um, now over time, with a lot of vibration, these can crack loose or become dry, 
and that's why I prefer the crimped and spaded connectors. I'm not sure what you guys uh, think about that, so let me know in the comments if you have any specific comments on that. As for the motor casing, it does have a number on there, not too sure if that's going to be the part number for the actual casing or the motor itself. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that to happen, but uh, couldn't really find any other way to uh, get it apart. So I just thought I would pull and there we have it. So the motor casing, um, the number that we looked at earlier, that's that one over here, uh, N458214 and then 050218-47U13B, that is the, that's the motor casing itself and uh, we can see quite thick copper conductors in there. It would have been nice to see uh, some potting around these these con conductors. Uh, sometimes these things, you know, over time they do vibrate and they can wear and the conductors can actually break. Um, although I stand to be corrected, I'm not too sure if it's so much of a problem with these brushless motors. Also having a look at the material, so I guessed that this was going to be a polycarbonate or a, uh, in fact it's a PPA, so it's a type of nylon. Um, Glass fiber reinforced 30% as well, and you can actually feel it. It's a very, very hard plastic. Uh, so, yeah, it doesn't look, doesn't look too bad. Uh, two fasteners in there. Now, that would be to remove the actual motor from the casing itself. Um, as for the armature, uh, well, armature, again, I don't know if it's called an armature in, uh, in a brushless motor, but uh, rotor, no, it would be called a... Stator, that would be the stator, and I suppose this would be the rotor. Um, that's just a permanent magnet, four pole permanent magnet, one, two, three, four, and small little bearing in there. That's going to be supported in the bottom of the case. There's some markings on the actual rotor itself N4252480427182847 U9A. Uh, so just basically the part numbers. The little fan is uh, quite cute. Also a nylon PA66 with glass fiber reinforcing, 33% this time. Quite strange, you normally see 20, 25 or 30. But not a bad little, bad little unit. And uh, the bearing, well, I can't really get this out. I think you would have to pull this section off, but I can't get in there to see what type of bearing is in the front of the housing. I'm guessing it's gonna be something the same as this bearing at the top. One thing that is fairly difficult to see is the arbor lock. You can see it slightly moving in there. Uh, the arbor lock actually locks onto the base plate of the plastic fan. So uh, this plastic fan is actually pressed into a small steel um, washer, if you want to say that. And it's got small teeth that are cut out. Um, and that's where the arbor lock kind of presses into. It's got a whole lot of little notches. So there it is guys, uh, the inside of the DeVault DCS 570 circular saw. Uh, we can clearly see that there are some nice design features, uh, but then, you know, there's some stuff that is lacking. Uh, probably because of the economics engineers that have got a hold of this thing and try to save just a little bit of money. Uh, I think it's kind of happening with all tools nowadays, although some of the more teal colored tools might be of better manufacture, but uh, I'll leave that up to the comments. <laughs> If there are any of you who know more about the design process, uh, more about why things are designed the way they are, please, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I always like hearing from you guys. And uh, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. It really does help me out. And uh, for those of you who are subscribed and regularly watch, man, thank you and a big thumbs up to all of you. And if you did like the video, Give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, well, thanks for watching it through anyway. And I suppose, guys, keep safe, and we will see you again next time. Cheers. <laughs> I should probably get this thing back together as soon as possible. Not too sure how easy that's going to be.